Hello, I'm trying to figure out how to shut off this music. <laughs> Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> My name is Erin Brophy. I am the principal oboe player of the Saskatoon Symphony and the sessional lecturer at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, I play the oboe. And um, the reason I'm doing these Facebook lives in my Facebook group called the Oboe Hub is um, when I was starting out on the instrument, I lived in a very remote place in the northern part of Canada. And actually, I'm visiting there. I'm visiting my parents at the home that I grew up in right now. So literally in the corner of my parents' house. <laughs> and um, I really struggled um, as I was trying to learn the oboe. Um, I didn't have access to good information. And for that reason, um, it took me a really long time to accumulate any sort of skill and learning the oboe was really frustrating. Um, and it's my personal mission to make uh, learning the oboe easier uh, by providing good information. So that is why I'm here today. Um, I'm also the director of an online oboe um, program called the Oboe Path. It's a six month um, oboe uh, education program that uses a customized personal plan, one-on-one uh, -on -one feedback, and a group online masterclass. Um, my students that are in the Oboe Path program, um, as they watch uh, fellow students progress, they stay motivated to practice. And with the customized personal plan, they don't waste their practice time. They're able to practice with clarity. And with the laser one-on-one -on -one feedback, um, I find that they improve really quickly and they see uh, results immediately. Uh, so the participants in the oboe path um, become the oboe players that everyone wants to play with. So the reason you're here today um, is uh, potentially you're a parent of an oboe player or maybe perhaps you're a band director. And I'm here to tell you about seven tips, seven tips for parents of oboe players. Before I get to that, I just wanna say congratulations. Um, raising an oboe player is a really special thing. Um, I obviously not biased in any way when I say that oboe players are very special people. <laughs> and I find in my studio that the oboe players that I um, interact with are uh, equal parts quirky and intelligent. And um, I really, uh, I really enjoy meeting oboe players. And you're lucky to be around one. So um, I'd like to make their lives a little bit easier by teaching you some things about it. So seven tips for parents of oboe players. The first tip um, I would say to help your uh, oboe player is to source good reads, good oboe reads. Now, oboe, good oboe reads do not come from your local brick and mortar music store. Good oboe reads come from professional oboe players. Perhaps you didn't know this, um, but all professional oboe players make their own reads. Um, and uh, you may be thinking, wow, why aren't oboe reeds mass produced? <laughs> and actually, my father, who's a, an engineer, uh, always had that question. Why do we have to buy these very expensive handmade reeds in order for, and Aaron, why do you spend so much time making reeds? Can you just mass produce them? And the answer is no. <laughs> First of all, there's demand, but also, um, the end of an oboe reed is as thin as a human hair. Let me say that again. So the end of the oboe reed right here um, is as thin as a human hair. Um, so that's like seven micrometers thick. And for that reason, and it's much thinner than any other uh, woodwind instrument. And for that reason, it is um, highly changeable. Um, it's affected by humidity. It's affected by altitude. It's affected by temperature. Um, it's affected by the acoustic that you're performing in. Um, and for that reason, oboe players have always um, made their own reads with their hands so that they can accommodate all these changes. Um, and that is why we have the skill of making our own reads. So if you have an oboe player in your life that is struggling with reads, what I would suggest 
is sourcing good handmade oboe reeds that will make a really big difference for them. Um, good reed information um, is also really beneficial. So that number one is good reed sourcing and number two is good reed information. So um, you may order uh, some reeds uh, and they're amazing and your oboe player is very, very happy on uh, the first day that they get them out of the, the mail. And then the next day they go to play them and um, they're unhappy again. Their reeds don't work. Um, they're not making that up. <laughs> Reads are highly changeable, and part of what oboe players need to learn is how to adjust their reads. Um, so your your young oboe player or your your oboe player that's in their second generation of playing um, is not imagining things. The reads do change quite a bit, and having the skill to and learning how the skill of being able to adjust your reads will really really help your own young oboe player. Uh, tip number three is sourcing a good functioning instrument. Now, um, first thing about the oboe that um, I always suggest is making sure that your student has access to an oboe that has all the keys. Usually oboes that um, are supplied by band programs in the school do not have all of the key work that is required in order to play on the oboe. Now, you may wonder why that is. It's because the oboe making companies um, create these student instruments and they just leave off keys, um, I think for cost. And so if you have the means and, and you are able to, sourcing an oboe that has all of the keys so that your oboe player can learn the correct fingerings from the beginning will make a very big difference. Now, if, you, uh, if the, your oboe player is just starting out, one of the things that you want to look at is whether or not you get a plastic or a wooden oboe. That makes a big difference. So tip number three is finding a good oboe. Tip number four is having really good information about what kind of an oboe you should choose. So um, I always suggest for uh, someone who's getting started, um, the, par the, the parents usually um, have a very good sense of the responsibility of the student. Um, and the reason I say responsibility is not only is the oboe expensive, but a wooden oboe um, has the potential to crack. And if um, it's made of granadilla wood, which is a very dense African black wood, and if it experiences uh, drastic temperature changes, it can crack open because it's very dense wood and it doesn't like doing anything quickly. <laughs> so uh, like I, what I mean by that is like any temperature changes quickly. So um, what happens when an oboe cracks is that there's like a small hairline crack uh, that can happen in the instrument and uh, then there will be air that will escape through that crack and that means that there's no suction and we need suction because we want the air to be going in the end and, and coming out the holes not coming out another spot on the oboe it means that the oboe won't function very well so sometimes like most oboe players have a, a some sort of a plastic either a plastic top joint or a fully plastic uh, instrument or a top joint that has wood and plastic in it. But it's something that um, I would consider for a student who is still gaining the experience of being responsible about keeping it uh, warm enough. Uh, what does that mean? It means, I mean, I live in Canada um, and where it gets quite cold. It means that oboes should not be left in the car when you're picking up groceries on the way home from school. Um, certainly you can walk outside with them, but um, making sure they're in a well-insulated case. Um, and conversely, in the summertime, you don't want to leave um, your oboes in a hot sweltering car either. That is also bad for the, the uh, cork that's underneath these keys um, is cork from a, from a tree and it can expand a great deal if it experiences humidity or extreme heat. So you, it's, it is a delicate flower, this instrument, um, in terms of keeping um, it from cracking um, and functioning at its best. I also wanted to, um, to talk a little bit about um, um, how the adjustments work on the, on the instrument. For example, there are these tiny itty bitty, itty bitty right there, these itty bitty screws. And um, if they move uh, like a hair one way or the other. So when I'm, when I'm looking at the screws, I imagine like a clock. 
So say, for example, it's sitting here at 12 o'clock and if it moves to one o'clock or if it moves to 11 o'clock, that can actually make the entire instrument not function, depending on wh which screw it happens to. Um, and it, it, so the, how do you get those screws to move? Well, simply by uh, the vibration of movement of playing the instrument can make those screws move. Um, the oboe traveling in a car can make those screws move. Um, and when they move just slightly one way or the other, um, the, you know, it is frustrating for a, a young oboist because their instrument stops functioning. Um, I can clearly remember when I was in uh, grade 10 or grade 11, um, it was half an hour before the senior band was to play a concert. And I couldn't, it was, I couldn't get my oboe to work. Um, it belonged to the school. I didn't have all the keys and the oboe didn't work at all. So in a panic, I ran to the band storage room and I grabbed another oboe. And the oboe that I had, um, the low notes worked quite well on it. And the other oboe I got from the storage um, container, uh, the high notes worked very well. So I remember in that concert switching between the two, depending if I was playing high or low. <laughs> you know? um, and, you know, these adjustments in our, in, in the oboe, yes, are very, very finicky. Um, and, and, uh, even with a really excellent instrument, um, they can go out of adjustment. Um, so it's not something that, uh, that, the, the the child in your life who says my oboe is suddenly not working they're not making that up that is something that has happened um so that brings me to point number five which is the thing that you can do to help your uh the oboe player in your life is find a good teacher uh find a professional oboe player who plays and performs professionally they are going to have a wealth of information including how to adjust your instrument. Those slight adjustments I do at the very beginning of oboe lessons and it really, really helps a student be able to play with ease. Um, and just it, it, if, if, it's, um, if it uh, is something that is beyond my skill set, we can send it for repair, but um, sometimes the oboe just needs to be tweaked a little bit. Um, so number five is find a good teacher. Number six, repair. So um, I would suggest, say, for example, um, you listen to this Facebook Live and you ran out and you got yourself a, a new oboe, um, that you would want to maintain that oboe um, by sending it to a reputable oboe repair person um, somewhere, uh, at least once a year, I would say, just so that there's some maintenance on it. Um, I would not suggest taking it to your local music store. Um, most general woodwind technicians do not have the capacity to, um, to fix instruments. Um, you want to take it to an oboe specialist. Um, and if you want to find out where those are, uh, just send me a message and I'd be happy to connect to you with someone that's close to you. Um, number seven, this is the biggest tip of all perhaps, which is support. Um, learning the oboe is a finicky business, um, and it represents a lot of frustration. Um, even with all of the things that I've listed doing, it still it can be quite frustrating. Uh, things change quickly on the instrument in terms of the reeds and, and how the instrument functions. Um, for myself, I have found that this um, constant change in how I have to approach the instrument has been very good for me. It's been a very good personal exercise and flexibility. Um, I think a lot of oboe players I meet are high functioning individuals and they like to um, really uh, reach their goals. And it can be very frustrating when something is standing in the way. And for me, I would describe myself the same way. Um, for me, the oboe has given me the gift of learning how to be flexible and to really roll with, with what your oboe is doing that day. Um, there are lots of things you can do physically in order to um, overcome some of the uh, challenges that I presented today. And if, if for you um, or your child, um, if you want more information, like more specific information about what you can do to play the oboe with joy and ease, um, I invite you to book a call. I'm going to put a link uh, below this uh, live in the, in the comments. 
Um, I'm going to put a link there and you can um, uh, 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 book a 15 minute call. I'd like to give you three things that you can do to level up your oboe playing. I'd like to hear your story um, and uh, help you uh, play the oboe with joy and ease. I also would like to announce, this is pretty exciting. Um, if you would like to know more, <laughs> Um, and maybe you, your child would be, or you would be interested in attending um, a more specific five-day masterclass. I'm offering a free five-day masterclass from September 4th to September 9th. Um, I am in the throes of designing it right now. Uh, I'm very excited to um, present some different material that... Um, that will help oval players uh, play with more joy and ease. Um, we often think that in order to play the oboe, um, that there's a series of, th of things that we need to do. Um, what, what do I mean by that? I mean that often, even though I just talked about how important finding good reads are, once you have those good reads, we have a tendency as an oboe player is to blame this read for everything that we're not able to do. And what my masterclass is about is to show you that the read is not always at fault. And there are things that we can do in our approach to our instrument to um, that will give us more ease in our playing. And um, I'm really excited from September 4th to September 9th to offer this free masterclass. I'll put a link below um, in this of this Facebook Live uh, for you if you're interested in registering. So thank you very much. Um, I hope that uh, the oboe player in your life uh, benefits from some of this good information, or maybe you just understand a little bit more about uh, the process that they are experiencing. So um, be well and play the oboe with joy and ease. Take care.